Uh, welcome again uh, uh, on the stage. Um, indeed, earlier today I gave a, a talk about what we're doing at AFAS and how we're using event sourcing and low code. Um, but um, from that project on, uh, we also joined into a research project with the university uh, in Utrecht. And I've been doing my PhD research um, with them uh, since a couple of years. And today I want to present to you a paper that we've published recently on event sourcing. Um, again, if you want to contact me or have any questions, you can find me on Twitter. You have my email and my website for papers, presentations, slides, uh, etc. Um, and I'll be uh, sticking around for the conference, of course, where you can find me. So right now I want to uh, present to you the work and the research that we've done into uh, event sourcing. And uh, the, the research basically was uh, an interview with 25 engineers uh, with uh, combined experience of 103 years uh, in event sourcing. So as you can see in the map, we've uh, uh, interviewed engineers from around the globe. Well, Africa is, uh, is unfortunately uh, left out. We didn't have any engineers who contacted us uh, from there. Uh, we did this, uh, these interviews in uh, 2017 and 2018 after asking for uh, volunteers on uh, Twitter uh, through the um, uh, secure uh, mailing list and through the Slack channel, uh, uh, probably familiar uh, with the audience. So from those, um, uh, through those channels, we uh, got uh, 25 engineers who wanted to uh, talk to us. And, and basically we had three questions that we wanted to, to discuss with them. So first of all, what types of systems apply event sourcing? Why do they do that? That was the first question. We wanted to kind of get the characteristics of event source systems. So that's pro um, the problem statement. We also wanted to know how can we define event source systems? What are the, the characteristics of those systems? How do they uh, look? What's the architecture patterns that they use? Um, and so on. So that's the solution. I won't be focusing on that today, um, but you can find the, the, the results in the paper, of course. And finally, we asked them, what are the challenges faced in applying event sourcing? So we wanted to know what are the consequences, both po uh, positive and negative? What are the challenges that future research should, uh, should look into? So those are the consequences um, of the pattern and using this pattern. So first of all, the problem. Who does event sourcing? So from those 25 engineers, um, well, we did the interviews, of course, with those engineers. Some of the engineers had experience in multiple systems. Some of those engineers had experience in a single system. Um, and we tried from the interviews results to focus on the systems that we had enough information on. So we discussed systems for project administration, marketing automation, website building, payment processing, content management, classified advertising. So you can see the business domains were all over, is a bit strong, but we're diverse. Uh, we didn't have any games, unfortunately, uh, or, or other uh, domains, but uh, mostly in the business domains, but uh, enough variation uh, in our uh, opinion to, to show that event sourcing can be applied uh, in many different domains. So how, those, how do those um, systems look? So I've got some characteristics um, in a table and I just want to focus on a, on a, a few key uh, things. So first of all, we had different sizes. So one system had more than uh, 100 uh, million active sites each size having maybe a thousand events. So you can do the math and see how big this system uh, would be. Other system had 1.1 uh, billion um, events, but there were, all, uh, there were also smaller systems with 100,000 events, uh, 50,000 events, as you can see. So again, event sourcing is applied in, in large systems, but also in smaller systems. So how does the growth look of those systems? Uh, we had uh, systems that grew with 4 million events per day or 70, 70 million per month. But we also had uh, systems that accumulated uh, 1,000 events per day or 50 events per day. 
So really a diverse set of systems. And finally, how does the system look like from a schema size? Uh, well, we discussed systems with 20 event types, which you can see as a smaller uh, system, but we also had systems with 450 event types, which is a, a lot bigger. So mainly we deduced from this uh, table, from these results, that event sourcing can be applied in, in smaller systems. There is a real benefit in using event sourcing, even if your system is small and doesn't gain the uh, traffic uh, of, uh, of uh, high rising uh, websites and systems. Um, but it can also be used in systems that do attract those kinds of traffic. So some other um, characteristics. Uh, we've looked at the rationale. Why do people use event sourcing? And here you can see four main uh, categories, flexibility, uh, handling complexity, uh, of course, trending. There are enough engineers that use event sourcing in CQS because it's trending. And finally, the audit uh, uh, features of event sourcing. And in audits, you don't have to uh, imagine only the strict legal audit, but also the fact that you can explain to your customers what happened and how the system ended up in a certain state. Uh, we also discussed immutability because event sourcing, of course, one of the key characteristics that you hear here in the community is that uh, events are written once, only a pend, never uh, rewritten. Uh, so we discussed that with the engineers that we interviewed. And, and there we can see that there are mixed results. So there are a number of people that have strict immutability. There are also people that see their event store as mutable, for instance, in conversion or upgrade scenarios where they can rewrite. And finally, we have also engineers that use a cutoff principle in which they can say all the events are moved to a cold storage or removed at all or, or something like that. And finally, technology wise, uh, we discussed with engineers from the .NET community, uh, JVM, PHP, and Ruby, Scala, Go. So a really diverse uh, set of engineers. Of course, when you use CQRS and event sourcing, uh, it's obvious that you use domain-driven design, that you uh, use CQRS in combination with event sourcing, uh, but also microservice architecture is something that you hear a lot, uh, be it a little less than the others. So again, um, the interviews show different results and interesting results, like that you can use event sourcing without the domain-driven design principles, because as a technology or as a pattern, it's also useful in itself. So that's something that you can take away, uh, that you can start event sourcing in a small project without doing domain-driven design. Uh, however, of course, the majority uses domain-driven design and sees benefit in that as well. So let's skip through the, to the solution. Um, what is the pattern all about? And for this section, I've just grabbed a couple of quotes from the interviews um, that might spark your interest and give you inspiration. So first of all, on the events itself, of course, uh, business analysts are telling us what the event should be. You capture business changes as a flow of events. You align these events with real world events. So this is all what the domain driven design event sourcing combination is all about. That those events that you store have meaning in your business domain. And um, of course, this gives you great benefit as we learned from the interviews, because it will uh, give you a stronger sense of what those events should be and it also helps you in discussing uh, evolution of your events because the events only change when the real world changes, which has impact in itself. And this lets you handle that differently than just technical evolution because we decide that a new property should be added into an event. So this is, thing, I think, key in the solution. We also discussed internal versus external events with our engineers. Um, and here we can see, for instance, in the microservice area, in, in the space of microservices, that there is a real benefit between the internal and the external uh, events from a contract perspective, from an encapsulation perspective. State propagation events, something that to combine with internal and external events. Internal events being more domain uh, specific events, while the external events could be state propagation events just to update a different microservice or to propagate change to the to the external world. 
And then a final quote or, or topic that we discussed. Um, of course, in the event servicing world, uh, you hear a lot about eventually consistency, uh, uh, asynchronous uh, and uh, things like that. Uh, but we also discussed with engineers that they use single transaction across event and query database. And in that sense, your CTRS application becomes uh, synchronous and eventually consistency isn't a problem. Of course, when your system grows, this will break down. Uh, so again, uh, choices uh, and decisions can be made and tailored through your uh, domain and your requirements. And finally, the consequences. I think this is one of the um, key parts of the study. Uh, also something that uh, we saw on the Miro boards uh, on the topic of what is missing in the event sourcing space. Um, so what am I getting into? So first of all, a lot of engineers discussed the learning curve, finding your way. How do we speed up new developers? How can we learn this new paradigm to junior de uh, developers or developers that are onboarding? developers that have only known a traditional development pattern. Uh, this is really something that a lot of engineers struggle with, a lot of teams struggle with. Second, uh, we discussed a lot about missing tools. Uh, again, remember that the study has been executed in 2017, 2018. So we are again for three, four years um, uh, further along. Um, but back then, uh, there was a lot of comments about frameworks, tooling. Um, people were missing um, starting kits to get up to speed. I think there has uh, been a lot of bit going on with the event store offering in the cloud, with ExxonAQ uh, and other frameworks um, uh, rising to the, the, uh, to the occasion, um, but still, uh, I think the Myro board says enough that there are things missing to apply event sourcing. Something that's also uh, uh, one of the topics that we've discussed with a lot of engineers are projections and your query model. How do you handle rebuilds? How do you handle large streams, new projectors, and the time that it takes to rebuild? Again, um, there are some uh, key takeaways in the paper. For instance, how you can handle the timing aspect of your events. Uh, some events are maybe not important anymore, so they can be, they can be ignored during rebuild. But it's an interesting and important thing. User privacy, how do we forget things in an immutable database? And finally, one of the hot topics, evolution. How do you stay stable and how do you update your system? We mentioned five patterns in the paper. We walk through them. Um, I think an important topic, how do you handle uh, schema evolution on your events? How can you deal with it? And what are the choices that I have? And what are the liabilities and benefits of those things? Um, so to wrap it up, uh, this is the paper, uh, an empirical categorization of event source systems and their schema evolution, lessons from industry. Uh, it's been published in the Journal of Systems and Software in practice. Um, you can find it with this URL, you can find it on my website. It's open access, uh, so it's free to download for everyone. And I think the main takeaway is that event sourcing is a pattern that solves the three problems that we see in modern systems, flexibility, complexity, and reliability. Uh, and I think those benefits give enough reason to incorporate event sourcing in modern systems. Uh, I would invite you all to download the paper, read it, uh, and see how can you can apply those lessons from other engineers in your system. And with that, I want to thank you for your attention uh, and feel free to ask me any questions through Twitter, email, or through the, the conference uh, website.